figured it's about time to do a one year review of the Makita 185 mil um, seven and a quarter inch power saw. Uh, try and cover some of the questions that have been asked in the original unboxing and review video uh, that I've had and a couple of other things that have come up. The weight of this saw is really good. You can operate it one-handed. I know it's got a front handle, but I'm operating it one-handed quite often. Um, and it is light enough. I mean, the base plate is aluminium. One person asked whereabouts it was manufactured. It's manufactured in China, even though the head office of Makita is over in um, Japan. It's manufactured in a chi um, Chinese factory. I probably said this in the first one, but it's an 1800 watt, or depending on the calculator you use, that's going to be um, 2.4 to 2.5 horsepower. Now we run on 240 volt here in Australia, so it is a strong saw for something that's handheld. The adjustments on it, the depth adjustment lever has been beautiful. Like being able to just flip that up and down and then that's set. I can sit it on the edge of a piece of timber, loosen that up, raise and lower the blade so that I'm just cutting through the bottom of the timber and lock it, and it's been brilliant. The balance once you've got it up on these weird angles is great. Um, I found too, I just did some cutting of um, some melamine coated chipboard for some shelves, and the first cut I did, I, I rushed through it, and so I got chip out on the top. But when I set it to just over the thickness of the, the the timber board like this and took it slow i actually got a clean cut both underside and top so setting the difference on the height of your blade is going to help out a lot with that if you're trying to adjust to a set measurement you've got a scale on the back for your depth adjustment which is good for if you're just trying to you you know something is 20 mil thick so you set it to just past 20 and it's going to be pretty accurate a thumb lever here as well for your adjustment from 90 to your others it does have this little dial on the front which allows you to set it to common angles 22 and a half 45 and then 56 which is the furthest angle that this will tilt over to um i just did that the wrong way didn't i that was sent to 22 56 so it will go over past a mitre if you're trying to do that sort of thing i did have a question on the last video about whether it had a square adjustment screw in the base plate for making sure that you can set it when you set it to 90 that the blade is 90 to the base plate now i came out and chucked an engineer square on mine and it is set to 90 but i had a look around blew the dust off and right here there is a hex head set screw in here and that pushes up against the backing plate for where this or the backing arm on this adjustment section so when it comes back to 90 that hits the set screw and that sets it you can obviously fine adjust to get this to an exact 90. I just checked it now because I needed to make some shelves for a cabinet in the kitchen. And all I did was use the saw with its little width arm, guiding arm. I didn't bother doing anything else with it. I just set this and just took it slow and beautifully accurate. I went and chucked them into the cupboard. They, they fit fine. When I've been doing some long rips, I grabbed a scrap of timber and there's two Little screws here or screw holes so I could screw this to it so that I'd have more of an um, a face area for when I'm ripping down the long board I had to trim some boards from just a little bit over 140 mil close to what, you know, five and a half inch uh, I needed to bring it down to about 130 mil so that it would match some of my other rails now rather than trying to run it through my dodgy little circular saw my table saw mainly because of the fact that they were six foot long i just set them up on saw horses set this so that the blade just protruded through the bottom 
put this fence on it and just ran some nice clean cuts straight through. Now, admittedly, that timber was um, Oregon, so it was nice and soft and I was able to do one slice right through and it was cutting through a 40 mil thick board. So one and three quarter inch. I have, however, used it to rip down some hardwood sleepers that I have here. And I was able to do that with this saw, running it through in several cuts. I think I took three or four cuts to go through it because it was such a dense timber. And this just powered through. I tried to do it in one cut to start with and realized it was just gonna overwork the saw. But running it through using, using it at, start at shallow and just slowly adjust the depth, this just powered through. And my dodgy table saw is basically the big brother of this saw. It's a Makita, it was one of the ones that, it was a 2000 watt, um, that's about 2.8, 2.9 horsepower. I bought that 20 years ago. And all I've had to do is clean the brushes once the commutator. I bought an AEG saw. The AEG saw did me for a while um, until I'd actually stripped the gearing on it from doing long strips in hardwood timber. This was my replacement. It's got to be one of the best things I could have bought. I was told by my wife, do not skimp on the saw you're going to buy. Buy something that's worth it. I wanted something that was going to have enough power, which is why I got a corded one. Um, I'd love a cordless saw, um, but for some of the stuff I'm doing, I just think I'd be running through the batteries far too often. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I wanted something that had a real good bit of grunt, but wasn't too heavy to handle one-handed. And this is brilliant. So the Makita 5007N, 185 mil, seven and a quarter inch handheld power saw, one year down the line, and I'm loving it. I'd recommend it to just about anybody. Nikita makes good quality stuff, and I'm not being paid to say that.